These are incredibly hard and uncertain times and I hope you're staying safe. We're living through history. This event, this pandemic will be recorded in books which schools will teach our children and other future generations from now. So stay safe, stay strong. And for people who are of my age or younger, there's a cool message I heard or saw as a comment on YouTube. Your grandparents were called to war to protect their country and fight for it. We're being called to stay home. So please stay home, socially distance, and I'm wishing you safety. My name is Ankur Shah and I make videos on YouTube regarding environmental and cultural issues. And in this video, I'm going to try to answer the question, what is the root cause of the coronavirus pandemic? There's a beautiful concept called the One Health concept that basically acknowledges the interconnectedness of human health, animal health and environmental health. We cannot live without the other. This separation is artificial. In fact, we have seen how animal health being poor in China affects the entire world now. And this could be another country next time. Using the One Health perspective, I will link animal health, deforestation, and urbanization to explain how the COVID-19 pandemic possibly began in Southeast Asia. We don't even have the clear details on the pathway of the novel coronavirus transmission, but I have provided recent references in the video and in the description below. There's a lot more scientific research to be done on this topic. Now, coronavirus is a type of virus and it causes the disease we all call COVID-19, which is a zoonotic disease, meaning it was transmitted from animals to humans. Most epidemiologists suggest and speculate with reason that it originated in bats. Due to the pandemic, videos of wet markets in Wuhan, China and other places have become viral, no pun intended. But seriously, wet markets in China have no guidelines. They are selling wild animals left and right. And it's, it's extremely sad to see animals being treated in such a poor manner. But it's not unlike animals being treated the same way, different animals being treated the same way in factory farms in US and Europe. It, if animals are kept in confined places with little space to move and little space to even eat well, they will become hosts of many viruses. In fact, the CDC reported that in 2015 and 2014, there were 21 states in the US with H5 strains of viruses which could cause bird flu. Now, luckily they didn't transmit to humans, but that does not eliminate such a possibility. These factory farms and wet markets enhance the probability of the transmission of viruses from animals to humans, but they're not the cause. So a primary cause of the pandemics is the expansion of urban settlements at the expense of wilderness. And more fundamentally, or you can say this is the root cause, at least according to me, is the ideology of man versus nature. We are wanting to dominate the earth, dominate nature, and that comes at a cost. So here's why. Deforestation has increased human contact with wild animals. Deforestation refers to the clear-cutting of forest land primarily for agriculture, urban expansion, and extractive activities such as mining and even oil drilling. Deforestation has been found to be positively associated with numerous infectious diseases in humans. Here are two out of many examples in that. Here's a recent study published in 2019 on how Amazon deforestation drives malaria transmission. Similarly, here's a study stating how the loss of closed forests in West Africa is associated with Ebola virus disease outbreaks. Now, correlation does not necessarily mean causation. And the details of the causation are in both of these studies, which I have linked in the description below. So please check them out. Now I'm going to explain how the coronavirus pandemic may have originated in 2019 from Southeast Asia. Now, here's an opinion article on bats, coronaviruses and deforestation published in 2018 in the Frontiers in Microbiology. This was published nearly a year and a half before the first case of the coronavirus pandemic we're facing right now. So this article summarizes the state of the research on linking three of these. And I'm going to try to summarize this for you. So first of all, bats are hosting many viruses and particularly coronaviruses, which represent 31% of their virome, which is the total collection of viruses they host. Now, generally, bats provide ecosystem services, which means they're beneficial to humans because they pollinate fruit trees and even control populations of insects, especially mosquitoes, by eating them. 
Today in Asia, 56 species of bats are hunted and consumed by low-income populations and they're also used in traditional medicine and on farms for producing guano. Now, Southeast Asia is the geographical region consisting of 11 countries, as shown here, and China has the strongest influence in this region. This is also the region that has suffered the greatest rate of deforestation with a loss of 30% of forest cover over the last 40 years. And in conjunction, human population in the region has increased by 130 million between 2001 and 2011, and is expected to rise to 250 million by 2030, meaning a large number of urban areas are going to be created, and this will increase population densities even more, which is ideal for pandemic outbreaks. Now, deforestation causes biodiversity loss. We know that, but this is not true for all species because bats will find new niches for their hunting and roosting needs in cities. So house lights attract a large number of insects at night. And remember, bats eat insects, so this is great for them. And houses and barns offer shelters for cave-dwelling bats, while orchards and fields are great for fruit-eating bats. So here's an interesting t statistic. About 4.4% of the rats sold in three live markets in the Mekong Delta region in Vietnam, and 22% of the bats sampled in three bat farms carried coronaviruses. This is a high level of animal contamination. So obviously, the combination of live markets with few guidelines and inhumane treatment of animals combined with shifting range of bats due to deforestation increases the risk of transmission of viruses through direct contact, domestic animal infection, or contamination by urine or feces. And this article from 2018 was a prophecy because it states clearly it remains obvious that the risk for new viruses to emerge from bats is probably very high. By being one of the regions in the world where population growth is the strongest, where sanitary conditions remain poor, and where deforestation rate is the highest, Southeast Asia meets every condition to become the place of emergence or re-emergence of infectious diseases. So from my amateur research on this topic, it becomes clear to me that deforestation is not just an environmental issue, it's also a public health issue. We must take care of our environment just like we take care of our bodies. And there's a lot more research to come in the next few years on clarifying the link between deforestation and the current coronavirus pandemic, so I'll stay tuned. So I'm no expert, no epidemiologist, but I think the coronavirus pandemic was years in the making. It's not just a once in a lifetime or a sudden event. Epidemiologists had warned countries of this happening, but most government leaders did not take that seriously. And we're paying the price right now. With increased globalization and increased international travel, we are now more interconnected than any other time in the history of humankind. This has beautiful and yet scary implications as we're suffering the consequences of this interconnectedness. So we have to change our ways. We can't continue business as usual. We just can't. So in my next video, I'll be going over the implications of this pandemic for our environment. So please stay tuned by subscribing below if you really like this. And I hope you're staying safe. These are really hard times and we are going to make it together. So please stay safe. Keep your family safe and wash your hands. Practice social distancing. Avoid crowded spaces. And I wish the best of health to you, your family and your friends. So I'll see you next time and thank you so much for watching again. See you.